In this section, we'll look at operations with whole numbers. That's adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. Um, in this class, on everything, you're allowed to use a calculator. So you can get your calculator out. We're going to be using that as we go today as well. So first thing is we need to know a little bit of vocabulary. Um, addition problems, the answer to an addition problem is called a sum. The answer to a subtraction problem is called a difference. The answer to a multiplication problem is called a product. And the answer to a division problem is qual called a quotient. When we're setting up problems, we need to know some key words. And when we talk about addition, we might say more than. We might say added to. And we might say increased by. If we're talking about subtraction, we might say less than, we might say subtracted from, or we might say decreased by. If we're talking about multiplication, um, we might use the word of, and we'll talk about some other special multiplication words in a little bit. And for quotient, we might use the word per or division, or problems that we talk about things being shared evenly. If we're splitting something up in even pieces, it's division. Um, and multiplication, if we're talking about repeated values, repeated addition, that again is multiplication. So here are some special multiplication words. Um, numbers that are multiplied together are called factors. These factors multiply together to give you the product, the answer. When we say something is doubled, we mean that it's being multiplied by 2. When it's tripled, we mean that it's being multiplied by 3. And if it's being quadrupled, you probably have guessed it, we mean multiplied by 4. We want to know how we can tell easily, quickly, without a calculator, if something can be divided. Um, so if we're looking at 2, we know it can be divided by 2, a number can be divided by 2, if the number is even. And by even, we mean that it ends in 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. Um, let's jump down to the 5. And we know a number can be divided evenly by 5 if it ends in 0 or 5. And the next one says um, we know it can be divided by 10 if it ends in 0. Now I skipped 3 because 3 is different. We know that something can be divided by 3 if the numbers add up to something that can be divided by 3. And we'll look at an example in a minute. If a number cannot be divided evenly, then there is a remainder. So to find the remainder, we divide the problem as it's written. The number, um, the quotient, or the whole number answer is the number that is in front 
of the decimal. If we multiply that quotient by the number we divided by, and then we subtract to see how much is left over, and that leftover amount is the remainder. So let's practice some problems. This says the difference of 15 and 4. So difference means subtraction, so we're going to write 15 minus 4. This says write the English phrase again, so it's 7 more than 41. That more than tells us that we're adding, so we have 7 plus 41. Now in these problems it's not asking for us to find the answer, just to write the problem. So in this problem it says less than. Now we have to be a little bit careful about less than. Um, less than actually means that we're going to subtract, but it means in the other order. Less than means that we have to have something there first, so that 30 has to be there first, and then we're taking 28 away from it. This subtracted from is the same idea. If I want to take something away from you, you have to have it first. So this from part is telling us that, e that this number has to be there first. So we'll have 200 minus 99. So here's a, a real-world sort of problem. It tells us that Marta's bank account began the month of January with $734. She had five transactions during January, deposits of $53 and $165, and withdrawals of $39, $80, and $391. It wants to know how much she ended up with at the end of the month. So a deposit means that we're adding money into our account. So we'll add 53 to it, and we'll add 165 to it. So we can type that into our calculator. 734 plus 53 plus 165, and we get 952. So now we know she had $952 after those deposits. Now withdrawals mean that she's taking money out of her account to pay for bills or to spend or something. So we want to subtract that amount. So we're going to subtract 39, subtract 80, and subtract 391. You can type that into your calculator all at once. 952 minus 39 minus 80 minus 391. And she ends up with $442 in her account at the end of the month. Exponents are small numbers that are raised. These numbers represent repeated multiplication. The big number is called the base, and the little number is called the exponent. We'll look at that, those examples in a second. The base tells us which number is being multiplied. And the exponent tells us how many times that multiplication happens. So here's an example. Here we have this expression. We read that 24 to the second power. The base is the 24, that's the big number, that's the number that's being repeated in our multiplication. The exponent, the little number, is the 2, that's the power we sometimes say. So if we write that in exponent form, or in expanded form, we're just really saying that really means 24 times 24. The 24 is repeated multiplication, the exponent tells us it happens two times. So to find the answer, we just type in 24 times 24 in our calculator, and we get 576. So here's another one. The base is the number that's being repeated. So the base here is 8. The exponent asks how many times it's repeated, 
and that 8 is there 5 times, so the exponent will be 5. So we can write it as 8 to the 5th power. The 5 is little and raised. Okay. If we wanted to find out that answer, we could type 8 times 8 times 8 times 8 times 8. Or in your calculator, you can use the little up arrow and put the 5. So you'll write, you'll type in your calculator that 8 up arrow 5, and you'll get the answer of 32,768. Your calculator may not have an up arrow. Sometimes it has an X with a Y exponent button or a Y with the expo X exponent button, but usually the up arrow is the most common.